So, hello and welcome to another class of ABI Mika Sciences. This is Abhishek Mika. So, today I'll be telling you about an interesting invention. This is recent invention in the history of human uh, evolution or human life. That is, you may have heard the term that is Hachi Moji DNA. So, it's a very uh, a crunchy term, but uh, what you can say, how to understand what is Hachi Moji DNA. So, I made this class to make you updated with this latest invention. So, without wasting time, let's start. What is Hachi Moji? So, Hachi Moji. So, let's first understand the term what is Hachi and what is Moji. So, Hachi stands for 8. Hachi stands for 8. And Moji stands for letters okay so this is the word or actual word meaning of this term okay now the invention is generally we know what it's supposed to uh, dna which follows the Watson Greek model is a it can stay in crystalline structure and the perfect structure is maintained by adenine thymine guanine and cytosine so, this is the uh, specific interesting topic here because this invention, this new invention says that ATGC, which is the primary building block, can be or in collaboration with four more bases be used for a higher level of DNA compaction for different purposes. That is recently published in Science Journal. And the basis which is chemically synthesized in this research article. So this is chemically synthesized basis. So the short form of the basis, because uh, individual bases have a long chemical formula and name, we have not going to write here, but the short form I will write here. P B Z S. So apart from ATGC, PVJS can also be uh, inducted inside the DNA, which can store uh, information much more relatively in higher capacity, which can be used for different purposes. And this study opens the path for alien life, so or extraterrestrial life, which is more capable maybe than us. So this is a very interesting invention in the recent times which is published in the science journal. Now this PBJS which is chemically synthesized basis, it can be used or it is shown in that research article that that thing can produce a double standard DNA center and RNA. So we know that A pairs with T, G pairs with C. This is, we all know, this is a known thing. But in this study, it says that C bonds with J as B bonds with S. Now, this P and B can be considered as purines. And this J and S can be or similar levels of pyridines. Okay, so this P J interaction can be directly compared, can be directly compared according to the research article that is published is G C. So P B and G C can be compared. In cases of bonding, we know that these bases bonds through hydrogen bonds in between them. Now, this GNC bonding which is much more tougher and uh, strong bonding, which can be seen in case of P to Z bonding. Whereas the weak bonding A to T can be comparable with B to S bonding. So, as you can see, this AT A pairs with T. If I say universally, 
then I'm gonna say the B pairs with S that is chemical synthesizer, yeah. and the G pairs with C means it can be comparable to P pairs with Z. So P B is a purine, J S is a pyrimidine. Now suppose you write a sequence here: G G C A T P Z B S. Okay, so suppose this is the uh, single standard form, single standard DNA form. So, what will be the complementary thing? Complementary will be G, C, C, G, T, A. So similarly, here we will be saying P, Z, Z for P, B for S, S for B. So, this is the double standard form of complementary study you may be. Uh, observing during this uh, research work or what is published in the research form. So this is very interesting invention because this will open part for several studies. Even these DNA molecules can store larger amount of data as you can see that is 8 to the power n. n is the sequence. n is the sequence length. So, first it was, we know, according to G to C, that is 4 to the power n. Now it converted to 8 to the power n. Though this study is uh, externally done, that is in the lab it is done, still uh, so much work to be done in this research and so long, long pathway to uh, go for a final discussion about this, that this may be incorporated or someday or somehow maybe this uh, basis may be included in the genome. But here in this paper, they have seen that this, uh, if you uh, consider this structure, they can form the structure with this uh, extra four blocks, that is total eight blocks. And that eight blocks can be, that eight blocks can be transcribed that is A, T, G, C, P, B, Z, S can be transcribed by T7 polymerase, T7 polymerase to RNA. So T7 polymerase is used in this study which can convert that DNA form of A, T, G, C, P, B, Z, S containing genome into RNA form and that RNA form can be functionality, can be functionally uh, shown or can be that is functionality is shown in the form of uh, fluorochrome reagent in a tube. So this can be finally given to product or you can say protein, you can say protein in the form of fluorophore. or fluorogenic substance which gives you uh, a color which can be uh, seen with the naked eye and you can observe the fluorescence uh, that it is uh, fluorogenic object or fluorogenic matter is there in the tube. That is the thing. So they have shown that not only for extra bases, it can be also transcribed by RNA polymerase to RNA and that can be functionality, function given functionality as a protein in the form of fluorophore. So this is an interesting study in, for, in my opinion uh, and uh, it will go for genetic barcoding, genetic composition. The chances of evolution is much more higher if you consider this extra sequence lengths or extra blocks if you consider this in this aspect. So uh, here one thing I want to say that T7 RNA polymerase is used here, not normal RNA polymerase the normal RNA polymerase is not able to uh, understand the sequence of these eight blocks. So they have shown this with T7 RNA polymerase. That is a really crucial thing to understand in this uh, study. So if you like my classes, give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel because these things stimulate me to take futuristic classes for you guys. So thank you and be with me.